Dear students, from today we will start some modules on data abstraction. And this is our first module within the data abstraction module series which is on arrays and aggregates. So why we need data abstraction? You know that the RAM, the main memory which we have discussed in some of the previous modules has number of addresses and on each address you can store data. However, in real world we want to store different types of data into RAM. For example, if you want to store the family tree which has one node as a parent and then it has number of child nodes and then it has further child nodes and it has again further child nodes. So how such a data will be stored actually in the RAM? Of course it will be stored as we discussed in the previous modules that on each address there will be storage for one data set. But if, you, if we want to understand, if we want to manipulate, if we want to conceptualize the concept of RAM and want to store such a tree, then it will be very difficult for us to conceptualize the things. Therefore, we need uh, some data structures, some data abstractions, and some of the conceptual data models in which we could store data and we could manipulate data. Similarly, if we want to store the uh, marks of 100 students, so as we discussed that each memory address can store marks of one student. And in this way, we would need 100 identifiers or 100 variables which will have different names. However, when we manipulate such data, we say that the marks of first student are 80, second students are 20, third students are 70 and so on. So this means we uh, actually in the real world do not define multiple variables for storing 100 marks of different students. So such a data structure or such a data abstraction uh, is available in almost all programming languages known as arrays. These are rectangular block of data whose entries are of the same type. For example, if we talk about students. So if we are going to uh, store the marks of students, then all of the entries in the array are of integer or numeric values. A one-dimensional array with 26 elements could be used to store the number of times each alphabet letter occurs in the page or the text. So for example, this cell can save that how much time the letter A has occurred in the page. This can store how much time the letter B has occurred in the text and so on. Then there are uh, two-dimensional arrays. A two-dimensional array consists of multiple rows and columns in which positions are identified by a pair of indices. So we can conceptualize uh, the real world example. For example, we want to store something that colors of cars and their availability in the showroom. So we are working for a showroom which want to store the data like the car having black color is available in our stock with the quantity of 10. So 10 cars are available in black color. So for example, 5 on red color, white of 8 and so on. So this means one dimension of such an array uh, index is telling you the colors for which you want to store and the second dimension over here is telling you the quantity which is available to us. So this means a two-dimensional array contains multiple columns. Similarly, we could have three-dimensional array, four-dimensional array, which could have more columns as compared to two-dimensional arrays. 
as far as the arrays were concerned, they should be of the same type. However, in um, there is another type known as aggregate, which stores the variety of data items that might be of different types. For example, date of birth is of type date, which can be stored. For student, its name is string, character array. Marks in metric, for example, could be numeric. Address could be string. And in which semester that student is reading or studying is again string. So please note again on the previous slide that in two dimensional array we had the same data type. So this black, red and white are not string uh, variables. In fact these are the same integer variables. So we are saying that black is denoted by 0, red is denoted by 1 and white is denoted by 2. So here you are going to write these numbers 0, 1, 2. So this column will be integer and this column will be integer. So the both columns should carry the same data type. However, in aggregate different variables or different data elements could be of different types and such things such items within the block are usually called fields and aggregates are known as structures in C++ which will you be uh, studying in the next course. So if we summarize today's module we have learned about arrays and aggregates we have discussed why we need data abstraction and why we need to store data into arrays, into single dimensional array and into multi-dimensional array. And we have also learned about aggregate types.